So, if you're looking for a small camera to film yourself, well, on this channel I film myself with a variety of cameras like the GoPro, the Fujifilm X-T20, the Chudo place opened eight minutes ago, Sony ZV-1, you know, cars are probably driving by, like, what the hell is this guy, <laughs> what the hell is this guy doing in the I'm in the woods. And even my phone. That are rotting and falling apart. So I love capturing both. The search for the tiny content creator carry around travel record your life camera <laughs> is endless. Now what you're seeing right here is a little bit of an illusion because I have like a little pro light going over here. I have a microphone that's hiding under here. You can't see it. There it is right there. <laughs> I also have a 20 millimeter uh, 1.8 lens on there. And if I get close to that, look at that. Look how nice the background looks. So this is a little deceptive because the kit comes with, where is it? So you get this tiny little kit lens. It goes from 3.5 to 6.3. So let's put that on because this is what you get in the kit. Nope, don't adjust your television set. The image just got darker because that last lens was a 1.8 and this is a 3.5. All right, so this is recording with the kit lens, but we did need to raise our ISO to 1000 to get the same exposure because the lens is at 3.5 at its widest right now. So this is what the Z30 looks like at its widest, and I'm gonna zoom in here because I want my field of view to be about this. And the what happens with this little kit lens is as you zoom it, it closes the aperture. So it goes from 3.5, it goes all the way to 6.3. So it closes the iris on the lens, which makes the image darker. I have found that with lenses like this, they work great in bright sunlight. So if you're a travel photographer or a travel vlogger and you're out during the day, this lens won't be a problem. But if you are in lower light, just know that you have to be raising your ISOs. And this camera is a crop sensor camera and it does not work as well as my full frame Nikon cameras. If I put it side by side with the Nikon Z6 II, there's more grain in the images of the Z30 compared to the Z6 II. But this camera is smaller and cheaper, so it's something that you, you, know, you have to think about. Now, if you are thinking of picking up this camera, Pick it up at B&H, that's right. Our friends at B&H let us play with this camera for about 30 days, so we're giving them a shout out. Thank you, B&H. Don't shop at that big, you know, I forgot what they're called, Prime Online Network. B&H, you can get a human on the phone. I use them for all my camera gear shopping. Uh, you can, you know, if you have a problem with the camera, you can give someone a call, you can return it, no hassle. Anyway. Shop at B&H. Thanks B&H for letting us play with the Nikon Z30. Now I got to play with this camera for a couple of weeks and here's some random tests that I ran. All right, so right now I'm kind of using the Z30 as if someone maybe is starting out. It's got no microphone on it. I kind of figured out the settings on the camera. I'm using just the window. So you may want to use the camera like this. I have it on a tripod and I'm shooting at 4K 30. And just so you could see the face detection, it's got a little yellow thingy on my eye and it can track me. So you can sort of walk forward and walk back. So maybe if you're creating something where you're talking, you can walk back. Now, the only problem is the further you get away from the camera, the stranger the sound is going to be. It's not going to sound as great if you're further away from the camera because, you know, the sound bounces everywhere. So, hold on, coming in here. <laughs> Oh, let me show you the little little eye thingy. All right, you see my settings there on the camera? Uh, this is very meta because right now the Nikon Z30 has a little box around my eye and my Sony ZV-1 has a box around my little face. Let me show you that. Uh, three three levels, levels of recording. recording. Now what's great about the Z30, it's a good entry to get you started if you're starting to make videos uh, and slowly you can add to your kit to make it a little better. So right now I'm using a natural light window. Let's improve our sound. All right then, how's that sound? All right, so now what's great is the microphone is actually picking up the sound. So before, when we were back here, the sound was terrible. It's not gonna sound as great. And now we have a little bit of a better sound. Now these sound pretty good. 
Uh, they're not gonna sound as good as a dedicated sort of little shotgun mic. I'll show you that now. All right, so now I've attached the Video Mic Go 2. This is a nice little cheap mic that doesn't need batteries. You just plug it right into the camera. I have a little bit of an extension cord. All right, let's do a little bit of an ISO test here. I'm at ISO 800 and pretty much with most cameras, 800 and below is like super safe as far as grain and noise goes. So this camera will test at 800 now, looks good. And let's move in to the darkness. Okay, so I'm on full manual mode, so I'm gonna have to fix my exposure. Okay, you can adjust ISO while you record. All right, so let's go to 3200. I'm in the back of the room now. And by the way, the closer you are to your light source, the prettier the light. So if you want nicer light, right now the light is a little far away, you wanna get as close as you can to the window light if you're recording. Uh, so this is 3200, let's uh, go a little further back here. Okay, ISO 8000 in this room. ISO 8, hey, have you seen my guitar? Since this is a vlogging thingy, I play it sometimes. Cool, right? This is the Z30 with the kit lens shooting at 4K 30. I also have standard picture profile, but I adjusted it because standard picture profile straight out of the camera is a little too punchy, a little too much color, a little too contrasty. So I reduced the colors on the standard and I also reduced the contrast to one minus 175. And white balance is something you should think about. So I'm gonna show you how white balance can kind of change what your image looks like. All right, so this is natural light auto. This is sun, which looks good. Give me a little bit more red on the skin. Here is cloudy, which makes you very warm, very tan. And then you can actually choose your own color temperature. So this is 5,000, this is 6,000, 5,000, 4,000. One of the things that will impact your image the most is the white balance. Let's change out the kit lens, see if it makes a difference with a little bit of a better lens, which is this 14 to 30, which costs about as much as the camera does. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Wow. Now this actually is a 14 millimeter, which is a lot wider on full frame, but on this crop sensor, it acts more like a 20 to 22 millimeter lens. So it's really nice. And then what's cool about this one is you can zoom in all the way to 30. Hi. Okay, and this is if you don't want that horrible YouTube blue light in the background, you just want something a little bit more subtle. Again, a light very close to me here and I just put, you know, things that are just, just little backlights to make it nice. Okay, and this is a flat profile. So here the camera just sort of evens out everything, the highlights and the shadows, and it looks great. I, I found that this one looks good outdoors, uh, but what, I, I would stick to the standard with the contrast down because the camera is really good at picking good skin tones there. Here, I think it just flattens everything a little bit too much and I find that in post, I'm trying to add contrast. Okay, we put the AF speed at the fastest setting on the camera, so if I show you something now, there we go. That's back to my face. Here we got the Google Pixel 6a, very nice, how beautiful it is. And then back to my face. So um, I think that is a little, if you want a quick rack of focus, you have to put it on level five to be the fastest. Okay, so now I'm shooting in aperture priority mode. This means the camera, I set the aperture at 3.5 and the camera will pick a shutter speed. Now, the only thing with this is look what happens. <laughs> if there's motion in your video, it's gonna look kind of strange. If you want your video to look a little professional and you want the shutter speed to be a little slower, if there's motion, you're gonna have to get a neutral density filter, an ND filter. It's like sunglasses for your lens and that'll keep your shutter speed down. But remember, content is more important than, <laughs> than shutter speeds. Okay, this is with the vibration reduction off. So I have the vibration reduction off, but I'm not walking, I'm just holding it here. Now what's cool about the Z30 is that if I put stabilization on, it doesn't crop in like other cameras. So let's do that right now. Okay, I just turned on the stabilization to normal and I'm just not walking. So I'm kind of just standing here. I have it at arm's length. Now what's cool about having a wireless mic is you can hold it very, very wide like this and uh, you have good audio while you walk. Okay, now if you want rock steady stabilization, almost as if the camera is on a tripod, you can put on electronic stabilization and this does crop in, but just barely anything, just a little bit, which is very appreciated Nikon. 
Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is if you start moving, you're going to get weird sort of thingies happening. So you're going to get kind of the camera trying to compensate for uh, some of the motion. Okay, I had to put the 20 millimeter 1.8 back on. I mean, that looks epic. All right, so here's my quick review of this camera, the things I love, the uh, things that I think could be better, and then maybe the things that could be deal breakers for some of you. So the stuff that was great with the camera, the controls were fantastic. The screen is beautiful on this camera, which it needs to be because there's no viewfinder. Uh, but the menus and the, the whole Nikon experience, the menus, the scrolling, everything is fluid and well done, uh, especially at this price point. The materials on where you grip are super appreciated. I feel the camera companies are getting cheaper and cheaper with their build quality. For example, the Sony ZV-1, which is one of my favorite cameras, and I record almost everything with it, the family, walking around. It's so plasticky that if it fell, forget about it. So the Nikon Z30 felt a little bit sturdier to me. Now you can see they cut corners in certain places, like the battery door is kind of flimsy, uh, but the dials feel great. And I was saying that grip, like the material on the grip feels really wonderful and quality. It feels like my the, the gear I use for my pro work, which is the Nikon Z62 and the Z72. And one of my biggest loves, which is probably the most important love, is the image quality of this camera. The skin tones, the Nikon colors work great, especially if you're filming food. So I, that that is 100% why I shoot uh, Nikon for my professional work, just for skin tones and it's like worth the price of admission if you want this camera and you don't want to do any post-processing or you know editing straight out of camera image is beautiful now some things that could be better but are not deal breakers uh, the, the Nikon Z cameras have these floppy doors that uh, take you know it's like doing a puzzle piece you have to squeeze them into place uh, it's it doesn't bother me at all but some people have complained now, the fact that there's no viewfinder on this camera could be a deal breaker for you, especially if you're, you know, lean more towards doing photography. So keep that in mind. I, I found the 4K quality to be pretty good, but I found that when you compare it to like the Nikon Z6 II, the Sony uh, A7C, I found that those cameras are sharper. And in low light, you start to see some grain. And that's a product of this being an APS-C camera. So in low light, I would definitely stay under 800. You could get away with 1600, but um, in low light, the camera kind of doesn't look so great. Also, the camera does take photos <laughs> and the photos are very nice. 20 megapixels, beautiful colors. Uh, but again, it's the same problem that is if, if you shoot in low light, just make sure that you are aware that you will get noise and grain at 1600, 3200. Uh, so you're gonna have to deal with that. And some things like maybe are deal breakers with this camera. The first one and the biggest one was the camera overheated on me. If I shot, I shot over, I shot about 32 minutes. So there is no record limit, limit on this camera, but at 32 minutes, the camera shut itself off for me in my test. So uh, it overheated in my room temperature office here. So if you're using this camera, I recommend like if you're doing travel photography that you're recording in short clips and that you're gonna put those clips together. I wouldn't use it for a long business meeting at 4K uh, because it may overheat on you. If you purchase this camera, make sure you purchase three batteries because one battery for like a day of travel, it's gonna just last you maybe the morning. Uh, so make sure that you have at least one extra battery and definitely two extra batteries if you record a lot of video. Overall, the camera was fun to use. The image looks great. It has image stabilization. You don't need IBIS. I would put a better lens on it, like this 20 millimeter 1.8. And um, yeah, this may be a great little travel vloggy content creator camera to take junky pictures of your food. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next time.